All right, guys, in this video, we're going to talk about functions. And if you have any experience in other languages, you know what a function is. It's a block of code which runs when it's called. Okay, but in Python, we, do, we don't use parentheses and curly brackets like we do in a lot of other languages, a lot of C syntax languages like JavaScript, Python, um, Java, C Sharp. We, we, what we do is we use indentation and uh, we use uh, colons. Okay, so let me give you an example. So let's say create function and to define a function we don't do function or anything like that or func we do def so define we're going to define a function called say hello and instead of doing this we do this with a colon and then to be inside the body you just want to indent over one like that okay so this is inside the function this is outside this is after it Okay, so that's very important. And if you're using a good text editor, you will usually indent for you like it just did for me. Um, so I'm just going to have this, let's say print and let's print string. Hello. Okay, and, and that's just defining it to actually run it. We need to call it. So we'll say say hello. And then down here, let's say Python three functions dot pi and we get hello. All right. Now, a lot of functions will take in uh, parameters or arguments. So let's say we want to pass in name and we want to just concatenate onto this name. And then down here, I'll pass in, let's say, um, I don't know, Sam. And if we run this, we get hello, Sam. So what happens if we don't pass anything in and we run this? We get an error that says missing uh, one required positional argument of name. Now, if you want to have a default value, you could easily just add an equal sign here and say uh, Sam. Now, if I run it, even though I didn't pass in a name, it says hello, Sam. And of course, if I pass something in, like let's say Beth, that's going to override the default value and we get hello, Beth. All right. Now, remember in the variables file, we have these um, these these triple quotes here and we use basically just use them as comments here. But these are actually doc strings and, and these are used to tell the user what a function does. So usually these will go in the function body. So the first line here and we'll put triple quotes like that. And then the convention is to start with an uppercase letter and then to end with a period. So we'd say like prints. Hello. And then name like that. OK, so you'll see this and it's it's just basically a comment. It doesn't parse nothing. It doesn't run or anything. It's just there for the developer to see so that they know what the function does. All right. So that's a that's pretty simple. Um, Usually you're not going to print something out from a function. You're going to return something. So let's say return value. So I'm going to actually define a function called get sum. I'm sure you can guess what this is going to do. It's going to take in two numbers. I'll say num1 and num2. And I'm actually going to define a variable in the function called total. And I'm going to set it to num1 plus num2. And then we would use the return keyword to return whatever the total is. Okay, now I could just say return num1 plus num2, but I'm going to show you why I did this in a second. But first of all, let's say print, because we didn't do a print in the function, so that means we have to do it outside. And we'll say get sum, let's do four and five. Okay, so if we run this, we get nine. Now, another thing you could do and what you usually do in this situation is define a variable. Let's call it num sum and we'll set it to that function, we'll say two and three. And then we can print num sum with no parentheses. So basically what we've done is we've just taken the return value of the function and assigned it to this variable. So the reason I define this total in here is because I want to show you that if you go outside of the function and we print out that variable, if we do that, we're going to get an error that says total is not defined because functions have their own scope. Okay, so whatever variables we define in this function, they're not going to be accessible outside of the function. 
All right. And I mean, I could create another total variable outside and that's fine. It wouldn't need, it wouldn't matter. It wouldn't uh, conflict or anything because they're separate scopes. Okay, so that's very important to understand. And it's like that with most languages. All right, so let's create one more simple function. Uh, so let me get rid of this print and let's define. We'll just say add one to num and we'll pass in a num. And then we'll simply return. We'll say num equals uh, num plus one. Actually, I'm going to I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do. And then return num. All right, so it's going to take in a number and it's going to set this num to whatever's passed in plus one. But an easier way to do this, a shorter way would just be to simply do num plus equals one. That's a shorter way to do it. Okay, and then if I go ahead and let's say um, we'll define num outside here and I'll just show you that it's fine to have num in here and outside here. So I'll set that to five and then we'll say new num equals add one to num and I'll pass in num which is equal to five and then we'll print that out. Okay, so if I run this, we get six. Okay, so down here I want to give you an example of what a, a lambda function is. Okay, so lambda is a, a small anonymous function. It's a function that can take any number of arguments, but can only have one expression. And they're very similar to to one line uh, JavaScript arrow functions. Okay, and I, I know I keep referencing JavaScript, but these are very, very similar. If you understand arrow functions, then you're, you're going to understand this pretty easily. So I'm actually going to recreate both of these, this get sum and add one to num in Lambda functions. So let's do get sum. We're going to create a variable called get sum, set it to Lambda. And then we just want to put the the um, arguments or the parameters. So I'm going to say num one and num two. And then we put a colon and then the function body. So I'm going to do num1 plus num2. Now notice I didn't do return or anything like that. You don't need a return statement just like you don't if it's a, a single expression arrow function in JavaScript. So now I can go down here and I can say print get some say nine and two. Okay, and we get 11. So it's as easy as that. If I want to do the add one to num, I could say equals a lambda takes in one uh, one parameter argument. And then for the body, I'm just going to do num plus one. Okay, no need to, to type out return or anything like that. And then let's say add to num and we'll pass in 10. Actually, let's do something that's going to equal something different than the last one. I'll do five. Run it and now we get six. Okay, so those are Lambda functions. They're pretty easy if as long as they're simple like this, uh, but they can get pretty difficult. All right, so that's it for functions, guys. In the next video, I want to take a look at conditionals.